Hello guys, welcome Hello. to the, welcome to the podcast. I'm Matt. I'm here with Rob. Mm. Today's podcast we'll be looking over the best games in our opinion over the year. And it's it's not games from like the consoles you expect, like the Xbox and the PS3, because we thought that's obvious. So we've got like Wii games and DS games in there as well. To start off was uh, one of Rob's picks was Assassin's Creed 4. Uh, Black Flag. Well, I've played this. I enjoyed it. But in my opinion, wasn't it just Assassin's Creed 3 minigame like blew up a bit into a game? I, I don't think it was. I think I think it was brilliant. I think it was brilliant what they did was because they made it so you can do more things, so you can like have your own fleet and um attack just random ships. You don't have to you can go anywhere you can go anywhere you want in the map and I think you can. Um, and you can just go, if you, if you don't want to do a mission, you can just go in and attack ships and steal their stuff and upgrade upgrade your ship so there's more meaning to, like, plundering ships and stuff. But, but really, it is just Assassin's Creed 3 boats, and they just got it. I agree, it's a good game. I feel, on a scale, let's say number one is, like, Saints Row 4. Which is basically Central 3, where the world gets attacked by aliens. It's exactly the same. There's no change in place. It's just the same. But we're not going to go no, into there, that. There, there is a change. Yeah, but I mean, we're not going into that game. It's, it's not. It's not like I don't think personally. I don't think it's like um, Saints Row. Saints That's what I'm saying. It's not as bad as Saints Row 4. It that was a bad game. But we're not doing worse games today. That's another day. But it's not like. GTA 5, where it's complete change from the character, it's different city, different people, you know, spicing it up a bit. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, but, okay, I see your point. We should move on to uh, Black Ops 2 Zombies. I know this is not a full game, but I just think the zombie DLC itself uh, was, like, pretty, pretty good, wasn't it? It, it, yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, I mean, the only the only add-on that I've really played is um, uh, Mob of the Dead, and that is scary as fuck. Yeah, I say they did a very good job in making zombies how it should be, because you see a lot of games where zombies aren't scary anymore. But just like <laughs> Mob of the Dead, that uh, that was just so scary, and it just brought back the feeling what the zombies should be like. There's also Western, yeah. where it brought together like new ideas about zombies and like masters and it's not just zombies out there that you have to fight as well you could use this big creature to your advantage so you know i feel they did very well this time with all the different zombie packs uh anything you want to say oh no i think i totally agree with you and i think that i think that it's a big step forward and i think i hope i hope they do they have it as a new game I haven't played um, Ghost. Um, I've played a bit, but I haven't got it. I don't think Ghost is a follow-on from WM2. Modern what? Don't you mean MW2? <laughs> Shut up! I thought you hadn't noticed. I usually do this every time. Uh, move on to GTA Five. How could we miss this out? This, I would say, Beautiful. is the best game. Of the year, in my opinion, it's just got so much variety. You can. I don't think it's the best game of the year. Oh, okay. We'll get onto that at the end of the video. But, but it's, it's certainly a damn good game. It's just got so much variety. You can do triathlons. You can build your own cars. And, know, and, if, and sorry, if you don't want to, if you don't want to, if you don't want to keep playing it, if you don't want to keep doing the missions, you can just go mess around. Yeah. One problem I do have with it, though. Okay. I know, I know the cheats. I know, I don't, I don't use them in the campaign, but I think they're a bit difficult to do because you have to remember the button. Just, I kind of liked it on GTA 4, you know, when you had it on your phone. Yeah, but then you had to get the, the phone number to type in. But you know. Yeah, but yeah, but once it was there, it was saved. Oh okay. Oh yeah, it was, so, wasn't that's it? So, that's only a very, very, very minor. Yeah. Thing I feel. Overall, just just being able to swap between two characters and changing your story like that, it was just 
Yeah, that's what I really, I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed the characters. You could be playing Michael, and you could you can get bored of his story, and you could just like change to Franklin and have a whole new kind of work there. But they all interlink so so simply, and it's it's just amazing. <laughs> I would like. I would like to put in a word about the multiplayer. Oh, I was gonna say it, but okay, go on. What? First of all, when it first came out, it wasn't very good. It was broken. Everybody but, thought this is gonna be bad. But now, but now it's it's brilliant. I mean, they gave an update. They gave me five hundred thousand dollars. I've now bought the biggest house in the game, and I yeah. can't wait for the heist update. The character creation, though, I think, wasn't as good as in four. Yeah, you need to work on the character creation. But other than that, when it first came out, everyone was like, oh, this isn't going to be very good. It's another attempt at making a good multiplayer. But then it started to get fixed, and it was just, you know, you could play with your friends, and you could have so much fun as a group. But you could also go around, set, like, putting bounties on people so they would just get killed. And it was just... And with a new update of making your own games, I feel it's, it's just going to get better, isn't it? It's just going to get better. Uh, moving on to Pikmin. Now, this is one of my favourite games on the Wii U. I didn't feel the Wii U has done very well at the moment. It's got good games, but it's not bringing out enough games. I like the. I, I, sorry, I, was person I wasn't personally really a fan of the Wii U, but now that I've seen it, yeah. I see the games are good. Like, I saw Zombie U. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good game, isn't it? I thought, hang on, this is actually quite good. Yeah, but... Then I think when I heard that... I think I heard somewhere that Wii was... That Nintendo Wii... That Nintendo was going to stop support for it. No, um... I was checking over the news lately for the latest podcasts and stuff. And, uh, I saw a thing from the PS3 producer. The guy... The guy is, like, you know... Not fully in charge, but there. He was like... The Wii U still has a lot of things to offer. He feels it could be up there with the Xbox and the PS3 if it just started getting more producers of games to get behind it and make games for that console instead of going for the two big ones. And Pikmin is a good option for Wii U games because it's, it, it was just so good. It's not like a big shoot them up. It's more of a fun game for all the family you collect fruit with these little cute little things and they're all different types and they've got different advantages i just feel it worked very well for a I game mean, sorry so uh, i played um pikmin the game i have pikmin on the gamecube but i play it on my way and i just feel i just like the satisfaction of just seeing them all you know doing doing your business <laughs> okay it's just so satisfying yeah so i, I love that game we've been on now to Pokemon. I'm not oh, going to okay, say right. which Pokemon because it could start an argument. But both of the Pokemon I feel are pretty good. They added Pokemon was slowly just getting, you know, the same old, same old, wasn't it? It was still fun, but it was getting the same old, same old. And this, where they added 3D battling, just brought it back to life. I found it, I found it almost like a new game with the 3D battling. Where you could see the move and your Pokemon instead of just standing there looking at you, not really moving. Uh -huh. Can I put um, one thing that I really enjoy? The one thing that I was really happy about um, with the with the Pokemon games was they included all the Pokemon from all the other generations as well. Oh yeah, I I enjoyed that. So, so I was like, right, I was like, right, it's Pikachu in this. Okay, I'm gonna go find it. And I love how they give you. The options to get other starters. Like when you first got the game, there was an event where you could get um, Torchic, which is one of the starters, and then you go meet your professor for the first time. I just want to point another thing out, but I'll get to that. And he gives you one of the other starters. But later on in the game, they added this new thing where you battle your professor, which is it's just so enjoyable because you know usually just this guy's your mentor and he looks after you. And now he's there, and you get to battle him and see what he's actually like as a professor, and it's... And steal all his money. <laughs> and you have to battle the guy at the Elite Four, and I like that. But instead of just letting you in, he finds out you've got the badge, he tests you to see if you're ready. And I, I like that as well. Moving uh, swiftly yeah. on... Yeah, I defeated the Elite Four. Oh, well, good for you. So did I. No, I, didn't. I didn't defeat the Elite Four. I'm not, personally, I'm not that good when it gets to the higher levels, but I just... 
even someone like me, I just still enjoyed. I just enjoyed the adventure. Yeah, that's what Pokemon really? gives. It gives an adventure. It's not about winning, really, is it? It's about enjoying it. I mean, the story I felt was a bit toned down for younger kids, but yeah, the story was. I can read the story, and I found it quite in, involving and fun. I did find it was pretty obvious who the boss was, though, and I think they should start making that a little less obvious, make it more of a cliff teaser. But moving on to our final thing, it is Tomb Raider. Now, I only added this because Tomb Raider has turned into a more of a, over the years, when, like, the movies came out, it turned more against, like, Tomb Raider came around a lot, lot earlier before this game, where it was a female protagonist for like the first time, and she was like an inspiration to so many girls out there to play games because she was the first girl protagonist in a long time, or maybe the first time. And when it slowly started turning more into like a female who's attractive, it lost like the girls. But this game brought back like she's not like well she she can be attractive to some people, I'm not saying she isn't, but. She isn't about that. She's about, you know, her first trip out, becoming stronger, learning how to survive, and it just um, brings back the feel. Can I put in something here? Yeah. I was watching a video of the gameplay recently, and I mean, I played some of the older Tomb Raider games, but I've seen that they've kind of taken the puzzle. The you know what made Tomb Raider great? The puzzles. Yeah. They, I think they, they look, they, it's looked like they've taken all of them out. I mean, it's just more story oriented, and I think that's just getting rid of the core basics of Tomb Raider. I do have to admit, I did put this in, in the best games, but there is that big flaw of them missing the puzzles. But I put it in for the sole basis of it bringing back a strong female protagonist, not just an attractive female, and you know, making girls feel like they're not just attractive ones, they can be gamers. And that just made me think, you know, if they can do it, why can't other games? So this has been the first podcast about the best games. We'll be doing the worst games as well uh, at a later date for the podcast. Uh, thanks for listening, and we'll see you all in the next podcast. Bye. Meh. Meh.